Hello, good evening. Welcome to this edition of the program. The political calendar now, they say, is being threatened by legal action from those candidates who have been disqualified from participating in the December 7th event. So as scholars and political scientists begin to think about this process and still waiting for the Electoral Commission to give a date for the balloting, we had been looking into the archives and we found out that, in fact, this is not the first time that there's been such a major disqualification that appears to have made the headlines and continues to make the headlines in a very interesting way, punctuating the electoral conversation so significantly. It occurred, um, as we found out, in 1979. Many of our viewers will not have been born at the time, and those who were born, some may have been very young. But we do have viewers who were adults already by 1979. We thank all of you for tuning in tonight. We're going to take you back in time to show you a documentary that will fascinate you uh, tonight. Two pieces of documentaries. Now, we found out in this book that I'm reading now, as you can see, the book is uh, about Dr. Hila Liman, who was the uh, president of the Third Republic. He won the elections in 1979, in the elections that we're going to focus on tonight. And the book is written by Professor Ivan Adai Mensa, who was a former vice chancellor of the University of Ghana. But Professor Adai Mensa was also an active politician in those days. Eventually, he became the general secretary of the party that won the 79 election. Now, in, uh, on page 27 of Adai Mensa's book, he talks to us about the processes that obtained around uh, April to June of 1979 by the Electoral Commission uh, in terms of receiving nominations from candidates. Now, there's a very famous Ghanaian, particularly famous Ghanaian, who was disqualified, and he held up the matter all the way to the Supreme Court to reinstate his candidature. Uh, somehow he failed. But this was a very powerful Ghanaian, more powerful than any of those people who are competing in the elections now, because John, Dr. John Akablemeza was believed to be the richest man in the world at the time. He proclaimed himself of having a fortune of 47 billion United States dollars. And we'll show you a documentary pretty shortly um, about John Akablay Major so you can meet the man for the first time. Uh, in fact, he passed sometime in the 80s. But the photograph you can see behind me is John Akablay Meza uh, standing on the campaign platform in 1979. This was, in fact, after he had been disqualified, hoping that he'll be reinstated. Credits to my Joy Online, where we have taken this photograph from, as you can see behind me. So let's go to um, page 27 of Professor Adai Mensah's book on Hila Liman, a book that I think all journalists who are interested in the political history of Ghana must get. You will find it at the University of Ghana Bookshop. There it is again. It's uh, Adai Mensah's book on Hila Liman. It says, it reads as follows that on the 23rd of um, March, 1979, 16 political parties were given their registration certificates by the Electoral Commission. But by the 7th of April, 1979, the number of registered parties had whittled down to just six. Some had merged with other parties, mainly the PNP. Others had been disqualified by the Electoral Commissioner on grounds of not fulfilling certain provisions of the political party's decree and because it was a military government, uh, the, the laws were what they call decrees, actually. Okay, so it means that they were disqualified for not fulfilling uh, some aspects of the law, similar to what we have seen in Ghana over the last week. Others simply gave the Electoral Commission notice that they did not want to contest the election, even though they were not formally disqualified. Now, this included Patriotic Alliance and Kweku Boatin's United Liberal Party. The six fully recognized by the Electoral Commission as eligible to contest the June 18th general elections were the PNP, the PFP, the UNC, the ACP, the TFP, and the SDF. Later tonight, we'll show you um, glimpses of the campaign of those who were qualified to run for the elections. We'll also play their campaign songs uh, for you to hear the way in which campaign songs were made by the advertisers as far back as 1979, and you'll hear them uh, talking on the platform. Eventually, we'll tell you who the winner was. It was Dr. Liman, anyway. But it will be refreshing to see how campaigns used to be then for the younger generation, and for the older generation, will be refreshing your memories. Let's get back onto the point about Dr. John Akablemeza. The People's Vanguard Party, which is Blemeza's party, the People's Vanguard Party still had a case in court. They were seeking to nullify the commissioners refusal to accept its final document on grounds of late submission. So Dr. Akablemeza's uh, documents 
according to Justice Kingsley Nina, who was electoral commissioner, was submitted late in the day. So he was one of those disqualified. Now, this man proclaimed himself to be the richest man in the world, holding a fortune of 47 billion United States dollars. He had traveled all over the world and convinced businessmen to invest in him, as it were, to decode the, um, the, the figures and the systems that will help him to access the 47 billion. American businessmen had believed in him and they had given him money. So at this time in 1979, Dr. Blemeza was riding very, very high. He was a very powerful man. And uh, many people thought that Justice Kislinina must have had a lot of confidence to determine that Blemeza's forms were not acceptable to electoral commission. Of course, Blemeza went to court. He fought the court all the way to the highest level. Eventually, he lost. He did not participate in the 79th election. But let's meet Dr. Aka Blemeza. Here's a documentary that on Good Evening Ghana we've showed to you before, about eight years ago or so. We laid hands on this and showed it within another theme. But tonight, we're showing it to you just so that you can meet this famous man who was disqualified from competing for elections. Welcome and enter Dr. Aka Blemeza. Aka Blemeza of Ghana, tribesman who Risa Nianzu II. To others, he is the fat man or just Doc. Blemeza says he is the richest man in the world, the sole beneficiary of a secret trust fund that last time he counted stood at 27 billion, that's billion dollars. But there is one small problem. The trust is so secret, so complex, he says that he needs financial help to unblock those funds. So he turns to investors, promising them a massive thousand percent return on their money. Put up one million dollars, you'd get back ten million. The mystery of Africa, the promise of instant riches. For hundreds of Americans who'd heard about his secret fund, it was an offer too good to refuse. When people found out that I had invested some money, they asked me, can I put money in? They asked me the story, and they were basically throwing money at me. Barry Ginsburg is a lawyer from Philadelphia, where Blamiza first started his operation. Together with friends, Ginsburg handed over nearly $2 million. I said to my father, I said, Dad, it's so outrageous. It's got to be true. I mean, how can you concoct this story like this? What was that story? Where did the secret billions come from? They came, Blamiza said, from this man. Kwame Nkrumah, the late first president of the Republic of Ghana. Before he was deposed in 1966, after 10 years of rule, according to Blamiza, Nkrumah smuggled out tons of gold and some of the country's huge cocoa profits into Swiss banks. He then set up the Oman Ghana Trust, making his friend John Aka Blamiza its sole beneficiary. At least that's what Blamiza said. I thought that he spoke with sincerity. I uh, looked him in the eye and uh, he told me what the money was for. So you decided to invest. Walter Hodgick is a wealthy businessman from New Jersey who met Blamiza through friends in Philadelphia. How much have you put in over the years? Considerable. Considerable. Mm. I've heard seven million. Fair well, statement? Uh, considerable. You wouldn't wave me off that figure? No, I don't think so. How much of a return have you seen on your investment? None. Blamiza often told investors he was a close and trusted friend of Kwame Nkrumah. So close, he said, that in 1972, when the former prime minister of Ghana died in exile in Romania, Blamiza was right there at his deathbed. But in fact, the records show that in 1972, Blamiza couldn't have been in Romania because he was here at Greaterford Prison in Pennsylvania, serving a one to two year sentence for posing as a United Nations diplomat and defrauding a Philadelphia hotel. He'd stuck them with a bill for over $2,000. Although he promised investors a quick return on their money, for over 14 years, no one has seen a cent. No one, that is, except John Aka Blamiza, who lives today in London in a style that wouldn't embarrass the Queen. He can afford to. It's said, from Americans alone, he's taken more than $200 million. Yo. Before he agreed Yo. to sit on his tribal throne with his Yo. scepter and talk with us, 
Blamiza said he had to carry out an old tribal custom to vow to speak the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. Have you defrauded people? I have not. That Oman Ghana fund is real. It is real. And they are paying. And they it are... contains billions of dollars. Correct. And these people will be paid. Will be paid. Have you been able to give any of your 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 supporters a, a guarantee? That do this... do get their money. Mm -hmm. Oh yes, they have the guarantee. What what is the guarantee? Mr. Bradley, my word is better than my bond. When I promise you that after giving me hundred thousand dollars, I'll give you a million dollars. I will never, 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 never this all night. That's your word. That is my word. And Better it, than your bond. Oh, yes. Blamiza says the only reason investors haven't been paid yet is the difficulty he's encountered unblocking that trust. Every morning in London's Piccadilly, he arrives in a white Rolls Royce at the offices of the Oman Ghana Trust. Flanked by private British security guards, he hurries in to try to release those elusive billions. In his office, he reassures investors who are still believers. Over the years, I've been branded as a, a confidence man, a flim flam artist. I say I have not defrauded anybody. But how has Blamiza kept investors on the hook for so long? Excuses have ranged from problems caused by military coups in Ghana to the overcautious nature of Swiss bankers. And when investors got suspicious, he simply upped the return he had promised them. He said, I'm going to write down a figure on a piece of paper. If you don't like it, let me know. He wrote down the figure of $150 million. $150 million bucks? Yeah. You must have felt pretty good then. I did. I did. I, I felt very good. I thought it was coming to a close. Uh, we would be getting our money any day. And then what happened? Nothing. Nothing happened. By 1986, Barry Ginsburg had had enough. He filed a complaint with the district attorney's office here in Philadelphia, claiming that Blamiza and his American associate, Robert Ellis, had defrauded him and a group of other investors of nearly $2 million. Ellis was tried, convicted, and sentenced to a minimum of five years in prison. There is still a warrant out for the arrest of Blamiza. Philadelphia District Attorney Ronald Castile says Blamiza had long since fled the states and moved back to Ghana. But he was then picked up by authorities there. He was in jail in Ghana facing a, uh, a charge, as they informed us, economic crimes against the state, which in Ghana carries the death penalty, we were told. But he is such a confidence man that he was able to convince the Ghanaian authorities to let him out of Ghana once again and go to London to distribute this trust fund. The guy uh, can talk himself out of, uh, literally off of death row. Not only did Blamiza talk himself off death row, he even brought the man who arrested him in Ghana back with him to London to work for him. Or maybe he's just there to keep an eye on him. And now which agency are you with? The, I mean the police. The police. Yes. But now you're here in his office? Yes. I'm, uh, assisting in the whole program. So you're working with him now? Working with him and working with the government. What is your relationship with the government today? Is it good? Oh yes, I'm a government official mm -hmm. of the Republic of Ghana. Is, it, is there a title that... A government official. But it's like minister of... Uh, no, uh, with this I'm attached to do, or I'm instructed to do special duties. And those special duties relate to the... Fund. To the fund. Yes. That government position now gives Blamiza diplomatic status, which means he can't be arrested in England or extradited to the United States. But the Ghanaian government has laid down a condition for this arrangement. Leave former President Nkrumah's name out of it. So now he does. Our former president has no involvement in the fund. Has no involvement in the fund. Not at whatsoever? All. Not at all. These are mere suggestions from the public. I'm totally confused. Oh yes, you should be. Where did the money in the fund come from? From our uh, from ancestors. From your ancestors? Ancestors, yes. Where did they get so much money? So where did they get the money from? Yeah. Well, I cannot disclose it. Over the years, Blamiza has shown investors dozens of documents to back up his claims. 
Omangana Trust brochures list over 20 subsidiary companies supposedly set up to develop Ghana when the money comes through. But all of them exist just on paper. That was all part of the show. Um, they were parts of uh, the Rolls Royces, the palaces, the, the tribal robes, the retinue of retainers. They're, they're all part of the uh, props that they use to run their confidence game. That confidence game nearly came to an end in 1979 when Blay Misa was sentenced to seven years in prison in Ghana for fraud and bribery of government officials. It is not correct. It is not correct, Mr. Bradley. It is a frame up. Enter the most unlikely of characters. Former U.S. Attorney General John Mitchell, no stranger to prison himself for his part in Watergate, Mitchell came to Blamey's aid. He actually flew to Ghana and convinced the government to release him. What's his relationship with you? Oh, well, he's my, he's my advisor. Your advisor? He, he advises me. So he hasn't put money in? Uh, time is money. Time? Is money. Yes, he has and put in a lot of time and it's worth more than billions. John Mitchell didn't live to see any of those billions. He died in November. But back in London at the offices of the Oman Ghana Trust, other investors just sit and wait and hope. For Walter Hodgett, down $7 million, waiting for news from the fat man has become a way of life. Uh, I've been called a fool. I've been called uh, crazy. I've been called... Uh, the fat man is boiling me in a pot, pouring salt in the, in the thing, and he's going to have me for uh, a dinner. What do you expect to get now? How, how much do you expect to get? Well, it's not the money, but the satisfaction. The satisfaction that I was right. When it's all over, what will you say? Hooray. When we met John Aka Blamiza at his house in London at the beginning of September, He'd had some good news. He'd heard from his banks, he said, that at long last, the funds were released and he could now pay out all those millions he owed. And when would this take place? I'm starting on Wednesday this week. So that would be yes. the 7th of September? Yes. So by the middle of uh, November, we should have finished with the Americans. By the middle of November? Yes. Blamiza was busy drawing up a list of Americans to be paid. The ones here alone were down to get over $800 million. But November came and went. And once again, there was no sign of the money. I mean, this guy is good. I mean, he will go down in history as a world-famous con man. This fraud has been going on for over 14 years, perhaps even before that. It is of proportions that are unbelievable in the, the dollar figures. And it is worldwide. And this guy has fooled people from uh, the heads of government all the way down to a, a poor widow in the street. The DA's office is wrong by making such an assertion because they do not know me. How many people in this world for 18 years can drive this transaction? How many? There's not a single person in this universe. I'm the only one. Would, would you go back to Philadelphia? Why not? Because I'll be able to prove this week that I'm worth billions. Yes. You think you'll ever get to see Blay Uh I'll be watching him on your show. That'll be about it. <laughs> In a telephone call last Friday, Blay Misa told us he was leaving London this weekend, not for Philadelphia, but Ghana, to make final preparations to meet all of his obligations, which is supposed to happen before the end of the week. However, we should point out that on at least four other occasions that we know of, Blay Misa has gathered people to pay off his debts. So far, no one has received a dime. We'll keep you. So that was the famous Ghanaian um, who put Ghana's name on the uh, CBS 60 Minutes. CBS 60 Minutes was the leading current affairs, global current affairs program from the 60s throughout the 80s into the 90s. For about 25 years, it was the leading top current affairs show across the world. And Blimeza had a full session on 60 Minutes. He was a very, very important Ghanaian. However, Justice Kinsley Nina, the Electoral Commissioner, decided that for um, late submission, John Akablemeza, Dr. John Akablemeza's documents will not be received. He went all the way to the Supreme Court. Uh, at that time, the highest court was the Court of Appeal. He went all the way to the Court of Appeal, and he didn't get through. And so John Akablemeza did not participate in the election. But you can understand the fury and the shakeup 
that occurred in the country when a man like that of such global consequence, whether for good or for ill, Blemeza was of global consequence. And his forms went to the Electoral Commission and Justice Kingsley Nina said, no way, I can't take it because you're late. The election occurred without him. And after the break, we'll show you uh, portions of that campaign and, and show you who won the election. We'd like you also to focus on the advertising of the music that was used for political parties. We are still in politics uh, on Good Evening Ghana for 2016. After the